In this video, we delve into the shocking news of the arrest of El Mayo Zambada, a prominent figure in the Mexican drug cartel scene. Explore the details surrounding the capture of one of the most elusive and powerful drug lords in Mexico, shedding light on the events leading to his apprehension in 2024. Stay tuned to uncover the story of how law enforcement finally caught up with this notorious criminal mastermind. Oncoming Police Car Skull Mexico On the afternoon of July 25, 2024, Ismael El Mayo Zambada, one of the top leaders of the Sinaloa cartel, was arrested. Many authors consider El Mayo to be the true boss of bosses of the cartel, despite Joaquin El Chapo Guzman garnering much media attention. For over 40 years, El Mayo has been an elusive figure for Mexican authorities, fueling theories about his protection at high levels of the Mexican and even American governments, or his extreme caution in managing his actions, or perhaps a combination of both. On July 25, 2024, El Mayo Zambada, accompanied by one of El Chapo's sons, was arrested after landing in a private plane at an airport in El Paso, Texas, where DIA agents were already waiting for them. This could indicate that they surrendered after striking a deal with the U.S. authorities. To understand the significance of this event and its potential impact on Mexico's criminal landscape, it is necessary to have a deep understanding of El Mayo's history and his role within the Sinaloa cartel. Few have been able to study the origins of Ismael El Mayo Zambada in detail due to his extremely cautious and reserved nature. In four decades, he only granted one interview in 2010. However, journalists like Annabel Hernandez, relying on records and testimonies from people close to him, including his favorite son and his personal lawyer, have revealed interesting aspects of this Mexican capo. It is crucial to know that El Mayo, whose full name is Ismael Zambada Garcia, was born on January 1, 1948, in the community of El Alamo, in the municipality of Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. At the time of his arrest, El Mayo was 76 years old. Throughout his criminal career, he has received several nicknames such as El Padrino, MZ, and La Señora. Figures like El Chapo, Guzman nicknamed him La Cocina as a code name for communicating with him. From his youth, El Mayo stood out as a calculating and hardworking person. He worked as a farmer to contribute to his family's expenses, who faced extreme poverty in Sinaloa. The start of El Mayo's criminal career dates back to 1968 when, at the age of 19, he met Cuban Antonio Cruz Vasquez, a heroin trafficker in New York and New Jersey, in Sinaloa. It was Antonio Cruz who introduced him to drug trafficking through his brother-in-law Nico, married to his sister Modesta Zambada. El Mayo then began coordinating poppy production, which is transformed into opium product was transported from Sinaloa to other destinations in Mexico and finally trafficked to Tucson, Arizona. By 1977, at the age of 28, El Mayo already had several plantations in Sinaloa and paid corrupt Mexican authorities to facilitate his operations. In 1978, in Los Angeles, United States, he began expanding his operations on a large scale. He did not operate under the Sinaloa cartel banner, but this idea was already brewing in his mind. Over the following years, El Mayo built a logistics empire in Los Angeles to traffic drugs throughout the United States, receiving most of the millionaire profits before sending them to Mexico. After the fall of the Guadalajara cartel in 1985, El Mayo gained more power by inheriting demand and expanding his criminal network. Key figures in his network included Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo and Amado Carrillo Fuentes, known as El Señor de los Cielos. The 1990s, particularly its later years, marked the golden era for Zambada. After the fall of several of the Arellano Felix brothers from Tijuana and the death of Amado Carrillo Fuentes in 1997, the Pacific Cartel, believed to be the initial name of the Sinaloa Cartel, gained considerable strength. Key figures like El Chapo, Guzman and Jose de Jesus Esparagoza Moreno, known as El Azul, emerged as prominent leaders, but El Mayo always had the final say. Between 2002 and 2007, the Sinaloa cartel not only established itself as the most powerful criminal organization in Mexico but also in the world, expanding its reach to some 50 countries, including places as far as Malaysia, the Philippines, 
Nigeria, South Africa, Australia, Spain, and Iceland. In 2004, the U.S. government established a $5 million reward for information leading to El Mayo's capture, a figure that increased to $15 million in 2021 and remained until his arrest in 2024. Although El Chapo played a key role in the Sinaloa cartel, the true mastermind behind the operation was always El Mayo Zambada. El Chapo became very famous in 1993 during the murder of Mexican Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo in the parking lot of Guadalajara International Airport, which marked the beginning of his public notoriety, further consolidated by his escapes from maximum security prisons. El Mayo Zambada was always the true leader, operating in the shadows without media scandals. To understand exactly who the Sinaloa cartel is and its current position of power, it is important to note that this organization not only engages in drug production and importation but also in illicit activities such as extortion, kidnapping, money laundering, vehicle theft, and hydrocarbon theft, known in Mexico as Huichicolio. The cartel has a presence in 15 states of Mexico, dominating completely in six of them and maintaining near total control in four, including Sinaloa, which could be considered the cartel's epicenter. After El Chapo's capture in 2016, the Sinaloa cartel operates as a cartel with three factions, the Mayos, the Chapitos, and the Guanos. The Chapitos, controlled by El Chapo's sons, are led by Ivan Archibaldo Guzman Salazar following the capture and extradition to the United States of Ovidio Guzman. The Guanos, directed by Aureliano El Guano, Guzman, El Chapo's brother, operate with some autonomy. The Mayos, led by El Mayo Zambada and his sons, represent the most powerful faction within the Sinaloa cartel. El Mayo Zambada has been turning in members of his own organization, which has allowed him to continue operating without being disturbed. His last known public appearance was in 2010, during an interview conducted by journalist Julio Shearer Garcia of Proceso newspaper. Shearer reported that it was El Mayo who requested the interview, which took place in an isolated location in the Sierra of Sinaloa. Since then, there have been no more photos, videos, or interviews. Probably, the fact that he was never arrested by Mexican authorities explains why, unlike El Chapo, El Mayo Zambada managed to avoid capture until now. Arrest of El Mayo Zambada Let's summarize the available information about the arrest of El Mayo Zambada as it raises many questions. July 25, 2024. A real-time flight monitoring app registered a private Beechcraft King airplane taking off from Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico, and landing in Dona Ana County, specifically at Santa Teresa Airport near El Paso, Texas. This airport is on the border between Mexico, New Mexico, and El Paso. DIA and FBI agents, they were already waiting at the arrival site minutes before 2 p.m. A DIA agent and an FBI agent opened the plane stairway. El Mayo made one last request, I don't want to look weak. He asked that it not be said that he had surrendered, but rather that he was captured, kidnapped, or deceived. The agents agreed and helped him and Joaquin Guzman Lopez, alias El Guero, to descend from the plane. Joaquin Guzman Lopez, El Guero, participated in the 2015 operation to break his father, El Chapo, out of Altiplano prison. He is linked to Sumilab, a chemical equipment company, and a real estate company, both sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury Department. He is also implicated in operating drug labs in Sinaloa and accused of trafficking drugs illicitly to the United States. For him, the U.S. government offered a reward of up to $5 million. Evidence of an agreement There is undeniable evidence that there was an agreement between El Mayo Zambada, Joaquin Guzman Lopez, and U.S. authorities for their surrender. Document signed in flight. A document signed while the plane was still in Mexican territory, in the presence of U.S. federal agents. This document, under Rule 5, is used in the U.S. to move a prisoner from one state to another. Reception in New Mexico. Upon landing in Dona Ana, New Mexico, near El Paso, Texas, DIA and FBI agents greeted the agents on board and El Mayo and Joaquin, indicating that it was already agreed. If El Mayo had not known about the agreement, the plane would have been surrounded by federal agents, but this did not happen. Official Statements Frank Perez, El Mayo Zambada's lawyer, 
denied that the drug trafficker voluntarily surrendered. He told journalist Keegan Hamilton of the Los Angeles Times that his client did not cross the border of his own will and pleaded not guilty to the 12 charges of drug trafficking and organized crime in a federal court in El Paso, Texas, on July 26. Personal Perspective El Mayo Zambada's Grandson Asterisk Asterisk shared intimate details of the capo's current state. He revealed that El Mayo, very ill, always wanted the chance to see his children and his brother Reynaldo, El Rey, Zambada once more. He also mentioned that El Mayo tried to convince the Chapitos to surrender to U.S. authorities, but they did not listen. Curiosities and Context Dona Ana County Plane The plane El Mayo arrived in belonged to Dona Ana County, not a private Mexican plane. Confirmation of a deal A source within the U.S. government confirmed that there was a deal, offering benefits in exchange for the surrender. Release of Ovidio Guzman, El Raton, El Chapo's son, was released two days before El Mayo surrendered. Although he faces pending charges, he could be in a state jail in Chicago. Impact on the Sinaloa Cartel Fragmentation and violence History in Mexico has shown that the fragmentation of cartels generates violence. The Chapitos and the Guanos factions would fight for control of the Sinaloa cartel, causing a bloody conflict. The DIA warns of the fragmentation, and a report indicates that El Mayo's health has significantly deteriorated. Perspective of Mike Vigil, former DIA Chief of International Operations. Sinaloa cartel, El Mayo Zambada surrendered, but the cartel's structure will continue to operate. Vicente Zambada Niebla, El Vicentio, El Mayo's son, negotiated a deal in 2010 for his extradition to the U.S., but it was not recognized. He testified against El Chapo in 2019. Other family members, Ismael Zambada Imperial, El Meido Gordo, and Serafin Zambada Ortiz, El Flaco, have also been involved in cooperation deals. Current State of El Mayo Personal Motivations El Mayo, 76 years old and with health problems, likely wanted to be close to his family in his final years. His arrest represents the end of the Sinaloa cartel, fragmented and weakened. Future of the cartel. Possible successor. Another son of El Mayo, Ismael Zambada Sicairos, El Mayido Flaco, could inherit control. However, the relationship with the Chapitos in El Guano could trigger an internal conflict. El Mayo Zambada's arrest marks the end of an era for the Sinaloa cartel. Fragmentation and internal strife could unleash a new wave of violence in Mexico. Additionally, several corrupt Mexican politicians could be tense, depending on whether El Mayo decides to testify against them. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and activate the powerful notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, where there is great content every day. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.